<laughs> and uh, this book, La Pancia degli Italiani, Berlusconi spiegato ai posteri, which Pancia is too difficult to translate. It's probably like Italy's basic instinct, probably the closest, because Gazzis doesn't quite work. Probably the best translation, the translation in English will be uh, Berlusconi explained to posterity and foreign and friends abroad. It sounds nice. The posterity is here. La pancia degli italiani, Berlusconi, spiegato ai posteri. It's coming out tomorrow in Italy. Uh, and I'm really proud and happy to be here, to have the chance to bring it where the idea came from. Here at the LSE, different room, but here we are. So I... <laughs> Thank you, but you haven't read the book yet, so... <laughs> Okay, now, <coughs> I'll do, I'll read you the beginning of the book. It's, I don't normally do reading, but I, you, the moment I start, you'll realize how useful it is to do a reading about this. So be patient, the 10 factors. I did, it's, it's almost, an, it's not an academic book. It's, it's a, it's, I hope it sounds and it's like my other books, but in a way, it's the closest it is to my work for The Economist, which I, I've been working for them for 10 years, for seven years, I was Italy's correspondent, so it's closer to that kind of better. But I hope it's fun, it's interesting, and blah, 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 and everything that it's sort of all they things that all authors hope their books will be. But the reading here is important. What I, deci I decided to do something that my publisher didn't like it, my agent didn't like it, my wife didn't like it, but <laughs> I liked it. I put like an abstract, the same you have in here. So, the first 10 pages, which I'm going to read to you, is called 10 factors. Conclusioni iniziali, initial conclusions, which I like. Uh, so I'm going to read, this is straight out of the book. It was translated by my translator, his name is Giles Watson, he's a Scot, he lives in Udin, he's translating my book into English. He, he's a wonderful writer, and so the English is his, but of course the, 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 the story is my story. 15, 20 minutes, no more, no less. <laughs> and then uh, we can take questions about this or about something else if you want. So Berlusconi explained to posterity and friends abroad. 10 factors. Explaining Silvio Berlusconi to the Italians is a waste of time. <laughs> Everyone has a take honed by ears of indulgence or aversion and impervious to change. Every Italian has the one true interpretation. Discussion is superfluous. <laughs> it will be more to the point if we profile Silvio Berlusconi for posterity and for non-Italians while we are about it. Posterity isn't here yet, but it will want to know what was going on. Non-Italians just don't get it, but would like to. After all, something like this could happen to them. <laughs> I know the British in this room is thinking it could happen in Britain as well. It's in Britain is unlikely. <laughs> but never say never. <laughs> How is it that Silvio Berlusconi, Mr. B for short, got elected in 94, topped the polls again, 2001, was voted back, back in 2008, and could well clinch the next election? Maybe in the, possibly in the spring, but in the next election. What's the secret of his political longevity? Why have a majority of Italians supported and or put up with him for so many years? Can they see that his appetite, his limits, his methods? Obviously they can. If Mr. B has dominated Italian public life for almost two decades, there is a reason. Actually, there are ten of them. One, the human factor. What do most Italians think? He looks like us. He's one of us. And the ones who don't are afraid he might be. <laughs> Mr. B adores his kids, talks about his mama, knows his football, makes money, loves new homes, hates rules, tells jokes, swears a bit, adores women, especially young women, likes, <laughs> likes to party and is convivial to a fault. He has a long memory and a knack for tactical amnesia. He has come a long way. It's come a long way, alternating motorways and back roads. He's unconventional, but knows the importance of conforming. 
He extols the church in the morning, the family in the afternoon, and brings girlfriends home in the evening. <laughs> Which is 74, it's, it's a kind of achievement. <laughs> Mr. This is not part of the book, is <laughs> Mr. B is great entertainment. Value so he gets away with plenty. Let me make a comment aside. If you've read Tony Blair memoir, I hope you have, but in case. <laughs> <laughs> If you're at the, the journey, there is a, a passage, a long one about Berlusconi, and they say international meetings tend to be boring after a few years, but with Berlusconi are always fun, and he's sincere. <laughs> and also he said that the man delivers, because he said he helped us to bring the Olympics to London in 2010, and in his new life as a businessman, I think Tony Blair is also thinking ahead, but that's something else. <laughs> uh, nonetheless, it's important, the fact that uh, <coughs> that uh, he is, to say, when I say entertainment, don't think that it's not important. Go back to, the, to my text and to my book. Mr. B is a great entertainment value, so he gets away with plenty. Many Italians ignore his conflict of interest. Haven't we all got them? His legal issues, a defendant is easier to like than a judge, and his inappropriate remarks, He's so spontaneous. <laughs> what about the broken promises, the hard truth, the blurring of public and private interest? Some people get hot under the collar. Others turn a blind eye. Apparently, there are more of the latter than the former. The divine factor. <laughs> Mr. B knows that many Italians speak well of the church because it makes them feel less guilty about not going to church or to mass, <laughs> and or systematically ignoring seven of the Ten Commandments. If you want to know which one, it's going to be the next book. <laughs> we don't expect our leaders to walk the walk when they talk the talk. Private indignation at public contradiction drives voting in many democracies, but not in Italy. Silvio knows he's dealing with a country that eschews the expectation to avoid disappointment. The Vatican, if not Italy's parishes, is content with Catholicism's friendly legislation and doesn't worry about the example being set. <coughs> Catholic movements like Comunione e Liberazione like to focus on ends, which are in the future, uncertain and subject to opinion, rather than the means their friends in politics employ. This eschatological mode is music to Mr. B's ears, shifting attention from action to intentions. Three, the Robinson factor. Every Italian feels he or she stands alone against the world, or if not the world, the neighbors. <laughs> Survival, personal, family, social, and economic is a source of pride and a test of ingenuity. Much has been written about Italians, Italians' individualism, our resourcefulness, its limits, and its consequences. That was Mr. B's starting point. First, he amassed his fortune, earning his purse as a self-made man. Next, he built on Italians' distrust of everything shared, our intolerance of rules, and the inner satisfaction we take in finding private solutions to collective problems. In Italy, there is no real public pressure to a new, fairer tax system. People simply evade the one they have. <laughs> we see ourselves as so many Robinson Crusoes cast away on a crowded peninsula. Four, the Truman Factor. How many newspapers, far from sports papers, including sport, are sold in Italy every day? Five million. How many Italians regularly go into bookshops? Five million. How many browse news websites? Five million. How many tune into Sky TG24 or TG La Sette? Five million. How many Anno Zero or Ballarò Anno Zero on a regular Thursday night? Five million. How many Ballarò on a good night? Five million. How many watch current affairs programs on late evening TV? Five million across the political spectrum. You get the feeling.